Hello, everybody. Hey, we are kicking off September. Can you believe it's the end of the summer already? I can't. It's just crazy. Boy, it goes by quicker every year, doesn't it? It does. At least his favorite show, the statistics. We are going to kick off with what's happening in the market. So I'm going to start off with Southern California statistics and what's happening in our market. Um, sales are down 29% year to date. Home price is up 2.7% year over year. And sales price to list price ratio is still over 100% at 100.1%, which we had never seen till a couple of years ago. Now, a lot of that, I think, has to do with the listings that are on the market, which is very slim pickings. Mm -hmm. So when there's not a lot of inventory, basic supply and demand, it is a seller's market still. It does. So that pushes down the number of sales and pushes up the sales price at 2.7%. Yep, and growing. Um, the median days on market, 17 days. And then we get to Ventura County numbers. The median sold price is $920,000. And our sales in Ventura County down 19.4% from last year. All based on the number of listings. Mm -hmm. Active listings are down 38%. From last year is where you're seeing this inventory crunch and 30.6 percent of current houses on the market have a reduction in price so they came on the market too high and now they are doing a price reduction that may be a due to a little overzealousness by the sellers yes and the buyers you know that's it's a seller's market but the buyers are still being pretty picky on condition so it's not getting through the home inspectors or anything. If there's things at your house that need to be fixed, you're probably going to need to fix them. Median that's, days on market, 25 days. That's a very short amount of time. Put, a, put your house on the market 25 days later, it's mm -hmm. sold. Less than 30 days. I mean, it was typically, you know, 50, 60 days um, before our world went sideways. Um, then I broke that down a, a little bit more because the numbers get even more dramatic as I broke them down. Camarillo, active listings down 59.5%. Um, the single family home sales down 25%. Median days on market 17 and 885 is the median sales price in Camarillo. Same as last year. Didn't move. Yeah. The only one that didn't hold on to your hat. Yes. Ventura, <laughs> um, active listings down 46.2%. And single family home sales down 14.9%, uh, median days on market 26, and the average median sales price, 982,000, is up 9.1%. Oh. That is a lot. That's a lot. And Oxnard uh, down, active listings down 46.2%, and the single family home sales down 42%, at median days on market 26. 900,000 is the median sales price. And that is up 20.6%, 20% the Oxnard. price increase in Oxnard. <laughs> Getting very expensive to live close to the beach in Oxnard. Yes, it is. Thousand Oaks down, average active lid listings down 50%. Their single family home sales down 50.9%, median days on market 21. And their median sales price 1.07 million. That's down 6.5% on the median. Yeah, the medium, I would think that they had more lower-priced houses sell because they've got some 20 and $30 million houses in the TO area. Yes, they do. Um, new listings at historic low levels, as these numbers are telling you, it's 50% less inventory than there was this same week in 2019. That's about half. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I want to address is foreclosures. There is no tsunami of foreclosures uh Coming. I don't care how many headlines keep saying that foreclosures are doubling and whatever the crazy headlines are, it is just not true. Um, in 2010, just to give you a little bit of some perspective, there were 1.7 million foreclosures. Now that was at the height of the bust. In 2020, there were 165,000, but then in 21, it went down to 65,000 because there were so many um, programs in place to try and let the forbearance programs ex uh, for people to keep their homes in 21 and then now in 23 it's 186,000 so if you go from a million seven to 186,000 what they're using these numbers that in 21 it was 65,000 and now it's 186,000 but that number that they're saying it doubled it tripled foreclosures are doubling and tripling 
Well, it was not a real number in 21 because it was all government assistance in that number. So it's not really true what the headlines are saying. If I had the graph here, it goes straight down like a ski slope. <laughs> it would. And the number of foreclosures has dropped dramatically based on the fact that people have equity in their homes because mm -hmm. the prices have risen so dramatically over the last three years. Right, so there's really no reason to foreclose if you have equity. Um, delinquencies are on the decline less than 0.06, 0.06, less than 1% of mortgages are three months or more past due. And that could have a lot to do with the loan requirements now are tougher than they ever have been. If you've tried to get a loan, and a lot of people do, it is very difficult. Yes, the home, appreci home appreciation since March of 2020, the U.S. national uh, price appreciation increased 41.8%, so almost 42% nationally. LA, 39.7%, 40%. Dallas, 50.8%. And Las Vegas, 37%. And Tampa, 63.8% appreciation since 2020. Wow. Because I picked those cities, those cities, those are where people are moving from here. Florida, Texas, Tennessee, that number wasn't on the <laughs> list here. Um, the, according to Lawrence Yoon, who's our chief economist at the California Association of Realtors, he said the market could easily absorb double the inventory that we have now, easily. And we totally agree. We've got buyers in the marketplace. There's just nothing for them to go buy. That's true. Very difficult to show houses when there's nothing to show. Yeah, and part of the problem, it's not just right this second. The problem, what created this problem is there has been 14 consecutive years of the home builders not building enough homes. So for 14 straight years, basically since the crash, we are in arrears that many houses. And it's at a 52 year a uh, average um, that is the normal run. We are 14 consecutive years less than the 52 year run. So that is why that pent up lack of just houses being built and along we've got the interest rates. It's not, it didn't just happen yesterday. It's been coming for a while. A long time. <laughs> the 14 years, I would say 20 years that they've been under building. Mm -hmm. And homeowners are staying in their homes a little lo uh, longer, 9.3 years versus 6 years. Um, so it's still a great time to be a seller. And there's still all the reasons that people are selling. You know, have you heard all the Ds? The Ds? The Ds? The eight Ds. The eight Ds. <laughs> what are they? First one's divorce. Death. Diplomas. Diamonds. Engagements. <laughs> Downsizing. Downsizing. Daily grind. The workforce. Relocation. Yes. Diapers. And discretionary income. People um, have discretionary income and they can move and buy a second home if they want to. Um, the, the interest rate situation is interesting because if you're a baby boomer, uh, you don't really care about the interest rate because you're probably paying cash. If you're selling your home and buying a new home, you're probably not even going to get a mortgage. So the the interest rate situation to you doesn't matter. That's right, because they've owned their home a number of years and they have a lot of equity. 68.7% of people have either their home paid off or more than 50% equity in their home. So that's almost 70% of the homes in the U.S. are fully paid off or have more than 50% equity. Is why when those people move, they're taking their money and it doesn't matter what the in, the interest rate is. That's right. They so, have a lot of equity, and when they sell, that turns into cash. That's right. So one in four homeowners are thinking about se uh, selling in the next three years. So we are out there looking for that uh, one in four that are thinking about se uh, selling because it is a great time to be a seller because um, the market is ripe for inventory. That is for sure. It is. Mm-hmm. So I think that just about wraps up what's happening. We don't know. All the experts are saying that the interest rates are going to come down next year. We'll see. Next year is an election year, so it's usually crazy anyway. But I think this election year is going to be <laughs> super extra crazy. Um, if, if, they, if it can be super extra crazy. I think it's going to be. So the homes are still selling and buying. There's still people in the marketplace. There's always things moving and we are out working every day so you know where to find us kerryandlisa.com your real estate edge